Hello everyone, today we are going to do something a little bit special. I'm going to teach you how to make a build for every single weapon in the game. Now, how can I do this? There are way too many weapons in such a short time. I will teach you the principles, uh, all the things that you need to look out for for your builds. So if there are a few disclaimers, so gear is not as important as you think it is. You Skill carries all your games, really it does. You can go into a game without any important gear and y'all do fine. And 99% of players are not top players, meaning that even if you have a perfect build, you're not going to always make the most use out of it. And uh, it brings me to a few principles I want to talk about, and you're going to see a lot of the same things in all of these builds, right? You'll see four different types of builds in Splatoon. You'll have the builds for the frontliners, then you'll have the builds for skirmishers and supports, uh, then you'll have the builds for backline, and then you'll have the builds that are meme builds, right? They're there for fun. Before I get started with the builds, I hate that I'm actually doing this now, but I've noticed that only 3% of the people that watch my content are subscribed. I'm a fairly new channel. Every subscriber that I get right now means the world to me. I, I really appreciate the support and I'm on my way to three, uh, 3k subscribers at the moment. So please consider subscribing if you like this type of content. Anyways, let's get to the builds. So this is an example of a frontline build. Some people might call it a meme build, but it's, I think this is good. Let me explain. Quick respawn allows you to respawn faster after not getting a kill. Now, why would you want this on a frontline weapon? Most of the time when you're going into a fight, you're going to be losing some of those trades, right? You're going to be playing very aggressive and you're going to get caught. Even if you're a good player, you're mechanically skilled, you will mess up or overextend a little bit. And this pairs up incredibly well with comeback, which gives you a main and I believe uh, a main and swim speed main saver, sub saver, ink recovery, run speed, and special charge. So you get so much bane for your buck that it's actually worth to, to run comeback. I think it's one of the best abilities in the game, especially when you run it with quick respawn and you're planning on being very, very aggressive. And what's better than playing aggressive is being able to jump safely to your teammates and get back in the fight as soon as possible. So that's why we have stealth jump. Stealth jump is not only for front lines. That's one of the principles I want to talk about. The, there are very polarizing abilities in the game. You'll see LDE on almost anything. You can run it on anything, really. It's it's just that good. You have uh, Ninja Squid and Stealth Jump. You, you'll see those all the time. And if you actually paid attention to the big house tournaments, uh, everyone was running these three abilities. Just for the people that don't know what LDE does, in the last 30 seconds of the game, and over time and ranked, you will get 24 ability points and main saver, sub saver, and ink recovery, which is insane. It's more than you'll get out of anything in the game. It's it's insane. Uh, and how it works in ranked is from the point where the enemy gets to 50 on the score to 30, it scales from one ability point to 24. So the more you're losing, the more you're ink efficient and the uh, easier it will be for you to get back in the game and not get overwhelmed by your opponent. This is why it's like one of the more consistent abilities because you don't need it if you're winning, but if you're losing, you definitely need it. And that's the same principle with this whole build, really with quick respawn. If you're losing, then y'all need whatever you can to get back into the game. I want to showcase now a next build uh, that y'all maybe see quite often on backlines. Uh, there are two notable abilities that I would like to showcase on backlines. It's uh, Respawn Punisher and Object Shredder. The reason why you don't want stealth jump on maybe a backline is when you're going to be jumping back into a fight, you want to jump back to a safe spot. And most often or not, you are the safe spot. You're not really the one engaging fights. You're staying alive most of the time. Uh, so you don't really get value out of stealth jump. So that's why you're going to be running Object Shredder. Object Shredder will help you mostly in modes like Rainmaker and Tower Control because Big Bubbler is very, very popular. There's a lot of uh, splash walls because of Squeezer and 52 Gals. The main reason why you're going to run it is to pop the Rainmaker shield. And more often than not, since you're in the back, you're, gonna, you're going to be able to actually hit those uh, shields and the things that you want to actually hit. Now for a Respawn Punisher, Respawn Punisher is a double-edged sword. If you don't know how it works, uh, when you splat someone, you increase the time it takes for them to respawn and also give a penalty on their special charge. Now, the reason why you don't run, want to run this on your front line or anything that's close to engaging fights is because it also affects you, but even more than your opponents. 
Um, so you'll see it on e-leaders, you'll see it on jet squelchers, you'll see it on things that really don't want to engage and should not be caught out. And you'll have to go 15 and 1, 15 and 2 in a game. And if you think that's not very possible, I've been maining tri strainer since the beginning of the game. And if you're playing safe, respawn punisher is perfectly fine. Now I'm going to give an example of a Spluttershot Junior build, a support build. So you'll see a lot of the same things, but different variants for certain weapons. Junior is a particular case where its ink tank is actually 110%. So you play around your bombs a lot and it has big bubblers. So you'll see two things. You'll see special charge and you'll see sub saver. Now here's a build that gives you special charge so that you're able to get your big bubbler and play a supportive role. And then you have sub saver so that you get more bombs. And with LDE, after a certain point in the game, you're going to be able to do uh, throw two bombs uh, with one ink tank. So how much do you exactly need? Around 70% through, you're gonna you're going to be able to send out two bombs with uh, a full ink tank, which is really insane and applies a lot of pressure. Now that I mentioned the main archetypes of weapons and the most common abilities that you're going to use on them, I'm going to make a quick note on Ninja Squid. Now, Ninja Squid is really its own thing right now. All the maps are very, very open, and they're very hard to navigate without being seen, and Eliter is pretty insane right now. And the value that you get out of not being spotted is very, very, very good. Despite being slower, it doesn't really matter if you sneak up on someone or you're not even seen. Uh, Y'all get more pressure uh, than if they spotted you. That's one of the reasons why Stealth Jump is actually so good and paired um, with everything else. If you run Drop Roller or you just jump into a fight, they can see you from afar and position themselves to splat you. And they'll just throw a bomb and kill you on landing. And your teammates really can't do anything to uh, help you. But if your marker is hidden, they're not going to be able to position themselves in a good way to kill you. Even if someone approaches and is there, they'll be surprised by the fact that you're jumping in and might panic or be able to swarm them because they're not ready to pick on uh, a 2v1. Um, now that I've shown you a few builds, let me show you how to a make a build. So here, uh, here I'm playing Junior. I really want to focus on the double bomb aspect of the build. So. You can run LD or not, that's your personal preference. So me, I want to focus more on having a consistent build, something that I don't really have to worry about uh, if the enemy is winning and it changes my playstyle. This is something like a beginner. I beginner to junior, I just want flat stats, okay? I like swim speed, it's a shooter, it's a lightweight weapon, we can run a little bit of that. Now I am very adamant on warning double bombs and specifically on this weapon because it does it pretty well. So I'm gonna go head out to the actions per ink tank and then I'm going to add as many subs until I realize that I can uh, shoot two bombs with a full ink tank. So I know that it's two mains and one sub, right? To get exactly. And however, in my builds, I've noticed that once you throw out two, you can't shoot afterwards. So as a personal preference, I like to put two subs so that I'm able to shoot after throwing the two bombs. That way I'm not a sitting duck. And then afterwards, it's really personal preference. Now I'm going to redirect you to a video that I just made on the three best abilities in the game. Go watch the video. There's a title card up there if you're interested in it. And uh, the video is about quick super jump, ink resistance, and bomb defense. You can slap those on any builds and it'll be good. Uh, details will be in that video. And then the rest is really up to your personal preference. Now, as you notice here, since I have so many slots, I could even remove that main here and put Ninja Squid and then just compensate with the subs and have that, and then the rest I can put maybe into swim speed or something else, I maybe want ink recovery, right? That is totally up to you. There's something I want to mention about uh, making builds is that people, when they start out, let's take a Splattershot Pro, right? When they start out the game, they are very, very ink inefficient. They shoot way too much and they're not focused more on what's going on and they have a hard time picking fights and managing their ink tank at the same time. So what they do is that they compensate by running builds like this, something like this. I've seen people tell me, and in my latest video, they told me that the, the best abilities in the game were main saver and ink recovery. They're not bad abilities, don't get me wrong, 
but I think it's a crutch. I've seen really good players that use this as a crutch because they didn't get used to playing the weapon differently and managing their ink tank. Now, if this works for you, that is totally fine. And focusing on the objective is very, very important. Like I said, it's personal preference, but this is not optimal. If I had to talk about something optimal, when you're getting good at a weapon, the, the better the, the you are at the weapon, the less you're going to run these abilities. Now, there are some weapons in the game, of course, like Dynamo, that are so incredibly uh, ink inefficient that you'll want to run these abilities. And it's a way to balance out the weapon for how powerful and strong they can be. Uh, something that I haven't mentioned at the moment is that there's a concept about diminishing of returns. So the more that you run an ability, uh, let me just take an example of special charge. You start running it for one main, you get a lot of value. Even for a few subs, you get a lot of value, but the more you put on, the less you're getting. So that means keep in mind, less is more. Sometimes a build that looks like, oh, maybe not that, uh, that looks messy. Sometimes a messy build like this is very, very efficient. You have a lot of uh, things that are helping you in fights and you're not crutching on ink efficiency. And sometimes builds like this can work. I, I've run some things like this in ranked and it's serviceable. Your, your skill really carries your games. I uh, can't repeat that enough. Now, there are a few abilities that I want to talk about quickly. Uh, there's special saver. Never run more than a sub. Um, it's not worth it. Maybe you can run two personal preference. More often than not, it's very good to run one. It's very good actually to run one, but more is just very, very inefficient. Special charge. Special charge is a thing that you're going to want to stack. We don't really have weapon kits that have, that really want to focus on their specials. Uh, I made a video on sp specials and what they do. Uh, go check that out if you're interested on that and why I do not recommend special power up. Sub power up is a very interesting ability. It's something that is very, very good on some sub weapons. Some weapons like using it, but usually not a lot, right? You know, maybe run one or two subs. Um, most of the case, it'll just throw the bomb further. Uh, for beacons, two, one to two subs is amazing. It's the best thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> and it's very efficient to run it if you like running beacons. We don't have many beacon weapons at the moment anyways, so. I have made another video that's coming out today as I'm recording this. Go check out the link if you want to see some fun things that you can do with sub power up. And that's where I consider it a meme build, but hey, meme builds can work too. Uh, I want to give quick mentions to some abilities that are really, really bad uh, and never worth running. There's opening gambit. Now, opening gambit is very, very unfortunate. In the first 30 seconds of the game, you gain what? Uh, a pure three, ma no, you get three mains of run speed, Swim speed and ink resistance. I don't know if the ink resistance is still, I am not quite sure on that. And every time you get a kill or maybe assist, it extends it for seven seconds. The problem with this is that you're not going to win your games in the first 30 seconds. And the fir first 30 seconds is more like getting footing, figuring out and getting picks and less about just instantly winning the game and rushing the enemy team. It rarely works out. It's a pretty bad ability and you should never run it, unfortunately. Tenacity. Here's another ability that I'm very sad that it's pretty bad. The reason why it's bad is most of the time when you're farming your special, you're farming your special for when your teammates are alive and not when they're dead. And more often than not, if everyone is dead except you and you're backline, you're not gonna just throw out your special. It's not going to do much. You need to play with your team. So at that point, the little value that you're getting out of tenacity, the little points that you're getting when your uh, teammates are dead, you might as well just slap a main of special charge. It's the unfortunate truth, it's more consistent, it just shaves off more, and even on weapons that doesn't ink all that much, it after one or two shots just shooting everywhere, you will probably get more value out of special charge than you will have out of tenacity. You can run both if you want, it's fine, just not great, right? There are better abilities in the game. You can run LDE and it's way better. A hunt is a little bit particular. Every time you die, until the the person that killed you is not dead, you will see them with thermal ink. And when you splat them, you will get the effects of respawn punisher on them and not on yourself. So it's like a respawn punisher, but better. But the problem is that it is so inconsistent. You will maybe get value out of it once that it's and that it's really not worth running half the time. Uh, it's a fun ability. I've played around it. It's 
don't get me wrong. You, you can use it. It's perfectly fine if you want to have fun. It's just that if you want to talk about optimizing gear, it's maybe not the best ability in the game. And then Thermal Ink, there are very few weapons that utilize this very well. It's mostly weapons that fail at killing, that are just this close away at killing and you want to scout. So I've seen people run this on NZAP. I, I don't know why, but hey, I saw someone get value out of it as he was uh, chipping everyone and uh, not committing to fights, playing a supportive role, and he was calling out all of their moves. It was amazing. Or you can play it on Jet or Tristrainer. I love it on Tristrainer as you can see where people are and then play safely and then get value out of it in the back. I made a Tristrainer video if you want to go check that out and um, try it out on that weapon. The last mention I will make is Drop Roll. The problem with Drop Roller is more often than not, when you get into a fight, when you use it, at top level people are just going to chuck a bomb and you will die on landing and you won't get value out of it. So. I don't like it, just run Stealth Jump if you're going to run a main ability on Shoes or even Object Shredder uh, for the same reasons that I mentioned before. The only mention I will make is for Inkjet and Zipcaster. Uh, it's kind of nice, I personally like it, that way it makes it easier for you to not get camp. But then again, I feel like you just want to run uh, something else on your build. And Ability Double is trash, it, um, just don't use it. And the very last ability that I want to talk about is intensify action intensify action is very interesting on shooters or anything that has de-accuracy when you're jumping so most shooters except maybe the squeezer or h3 nozzlenose has jump de-accuracy so when you're jumping with a weapon this is like the base de-accuracy of the weapon and when you're jumping it goes to six percent now keep in mind that you will if you run three peers you're never going to be more accurate than you are on the ground so that goes for the 96 gal 2 and the 52 so if you were thinking that you want to be more accurate in the air by just running a lot of it, it's not going to work the way you think it is going to work. So more often than not, the optimal thing to do is run two to three subs, maybe a main maximum on shooters, on shooters, right? That is a very good sweet spot where you actually start to feel the, the, the benefits of it. And getting faster squid rolls and squid surges is also nice. It's, you don't play around it, but it's a bonus in my opinion. The thing that you all want to hear is how does it work on blasters? So it does exactly the same thing on blasters. It has a different scaling than shooters. It's its own, that's own class has its different scaling. And generally you're going to want to run about two mains. Uh, that is a recommendation made by uh, Prochara, I think. I watched one of his videos. I'm not a blaster main, but if you want to get good value out of it and start to feel its effects, I've I feel its effects after two mains maybe a little bit more. The only problem is that weapons that need this type of uh, benefit also would want to run a quick respawn build with comeback, right? So the, the, you have to make a choice. Do you want value out of your shots or do you want to play super aggressive and play grounded, right? Also a question of personal preference. Now, if you're really confused about the game and you don't know what to do, you don't know how to, what you're doing or what's good, I would recommend you to go check out the builds. Let's say you want to be a splat roller main and you have absolutely no idea, you have no discernment on what's good in the game, click on splat roller and check what people are making. People have been making builds. So you're seeing a trend immediately that Ninja Squid and Swim Speed is super meta, right? The roller does amazingly with it. When you put down a big bubbler, it's very hard to tell where the art and it's never worth to really go challenge that when they throw out a curling bomb it's a 50 50 on whether or not the the roller is following that curling bomb or not so you can already start to see the trends immediately as soon as you check out a build let's go check out a build for a different weapon uh let's say you're going for e leader right imagine you had no idea that respawn punisher was good the first thing that you notice is that everyone's running respawn punisher there's one object shredder here that's because it is a he's running that in zones this person is running it in zones because of big bubbler right you can explain these builds usually uh there are some troll builds every now and then but you can see trends immediately now i didn't get into any of the specifics of all the weapons i just gave you some tools to uh create your gear and uh give you an idea of what you're supposed to be running i hope that this video was helpful and if I forgot anything, please let me uh, know in the comment section. Myself, I'm doing builds for every single weapon in the game, so you can check out my builds in the description. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you next time for a different video. Bye-bye.